Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to work on creating a text box system. And if you've watched any of my other text box tutorials, this one is going to be a little bit different. I've had some time to refine the system and we're also going to be including things like portraits and camera maneuverability. So it's going to be a little bit more complex. We'll do this over the next few tutorials, but by the end, this is what our system is going to look like. So we're going to have portraits, names, voices for the characters, and typewriter text that spells out over time. And we'll also include this camera maneuverability, so you can move it to a specific location or character. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is, so just like our inventory, we're going to be drawing the text boxes on the GUI layer because it's going to be in a fixed location on the screen and we don't want it being an object kind of in the room. We want it to be something that is just being displayed to the player. And what I'm going to do now is actually resize the GUI layer to be at the same size as our views in our rooms. And this is going to sort of mess up a little bit of what we did with the inventory. We're going to have to scale it. And that's just because the GUI layer is usually not the same size as the view in your room. It's the same size as the game window itself. And remember, we were kind of scaling our game up by two. So to make things easier, I'm going to rescale it to be the same size in the game object. So we only need to do this once because it's set for the rest of the game. And what I'm actually going to do is create a global variable so that whenever we want to reference what the width and height of the game is, we can just refer to this global variable. And this is something we could have done earlier, but now that our game is a little bit more established, I'm going to set up this stuff now. So the way we declare a global variable is just to write global dot and then whatever the variable name is. So I'm going to say game width and I'm going to set this equal to so 750 because that was the width that we had in this room for the view and the height was 420. All right, and now let's set the GUI size to be equal to that. So display set GUI size, and then we have to write global.gameWidth. So you have to write that every single time you want to reference the global variable. So, and the height, global.gameHeight. All right, so now the GUI layer is resized. So now we don't really need these anymore in any of our objects. So before, when we were just getting the display width and height, we can now just reference this variable right here. So I think we were referencing that here when we were drawing the fade. So instead of having GUI width and height, we can just write global game width and global game height. And you can do that in all your objects so that now if you ever changed the game width and height, you can just do it from within here and they'll all be accessing the same variable. So if we run the game now, you'll see what I mean about the scaling. So now the GUI width and height is at the same resolution as the rest of the game. But if you remember in our inventory, we were actually scaling it up by two to fit that GUI size that we had before that was twice as big. So now we can just scale it down to one, just like that. And when we run it now, that should fix the inventory. There we go. And the fonts are all going to be a bit wonky now, so we might have to change some of those sizes, but I'll let you do that on your own, just resize it to something that fits nicely. All right, now that we've done that, let's get started on the actual text box. So what we'll have to do is import a few new assets. So I've left a link to my ones in the description. Obviously I've already imported mine. So once you've done that, we are ready to go. So these are just sprites. So this one has all of my character's portraits. And I've kind of used just some blank slates because I'm not really an artist and I don't want to go and draw a bunch of characters. So I've just used some free assets as usual, but basically, so to do it the way that I have, you'll just have this one sprite and every frame will be a new person. And when it comes to drawing the appropriate portrait, basically a character is going to set its image index to the appropriate frame. So I've also got a portrait frame. So this is what is going to be drawn over the character portrait. And this is what's going to be drawn under the character portrait. And then this is the text box itself. So you can use your own assets if you like, or you can just use the ones I'm using. All right, let's make the text box object. So I'm going to put it in this folder again, because it's not a proper object in the game world. This is just for the player. So we're going to call this OBJ text box. Obviously there is a lot to do, but let's start small and just get something drawing. So let's just come into the draw GUI event and think about the logic of what we're going to be doing. So if you imagine the text box, the order that we draw all of the sprites is going to be important because we want the text to be appearing on top of the text box and we want the portrait and the frames to be ordered correctly. So let's just comment them. Firstly, let's just draw the text box itself. Then let's draw the very back of the portrait, then the portrait itself, the frame, then the name 
box that the name is going to display in. And then the for the text portion of this, we're going to draw the name on top of the name box and then the text. So that is the order of everything. Now, what we're going to have to do is plan out where everything is. So we'll need to decide on the positions for every single element. So for the text box, for the text itself, which is probably not going to be the same as the text box. It's going to be over a little bit with some buffer room between the edges of the text box. We're going to need a location for the portrait and then for the name box and also the name text. So for example, let's think about where the portrait is. So we're going to have to do some maths here. So the entire text box is in the center. So what we're going to have to do is firstly, let's get half the width of the GUI layer. So half of that global game width variable. And that puts us in the very center. But if we start drawing from there, because the anchor point is at the top left, it's just going to draw it right there in the center. So we're going to need to put it over a bit. So we're going to need to subtract half the width of the text box. And then we're going to need to subtract half the width of the portrait to get it to where the portrait is. All right, so let's come into the create event and set up some variables for this. So firstly, I'm going to make some variables to store all of our sprites. And this is just so that we can keep it consistent if you have named it something else. So I'm going to go box equals to the text box, frame, portrait frame, and name box for the name box. All right, and now we're going to have to get the width and heights of all of these, because as I said before, with the maths to get our coordinates right, we need to know the widths of everything. Just like that. All right, and now let's get that portrait location because that's sort of going to anchor the rest of everything. So let's go portrait X. So just like I said, we're going to need to halve the game width, which will get us to the center. The box width will get us over again. And then the portrait width itself. And I'll just times all of these by a half instead of doing it to each of them individually. And now the portrait Y. So this is the Y position of the portrait. I want it basically almost all the way down the bottom. So that would be the GUI height minus the portrait height. So that would put it all the way down the bottom. So that would come all the way down and then up by whatever the portrait height is. But actually, I'm not going to have it all the way down the bottom. I'm going to have it up a little tiny bit. So I'm just going to times the GUI height by 0.98. So that'll just shift it up a little bit. And now for the text box, all we have to do is, well, we're going to be the same as this, but just shift it over by the width of the portrait. So we can go port X plus the portrait width. And the text box Y position is actually going to be the same as the portrait Y. Well, that's where I'm going to put it anyway. And for the name box, I'm also going to put this at the same X position as the portrait. And for the Y, I'm going to have it at box Y. And then we're going to shift it up by whatever the height of the name box is. So we just subtract that. All right, so let's draw these. So now we've got the positions for all of them. So we can draw this. So let's go draw sprite. So the box, the frame is just zero. And then box X, box Y. And then we draw the back of the portrait. So the frame, we called it. Now for the back of the portrait, remember that that is frame zero in this. And then frame one was the top of the frame. First we draw frame zero. And this is just going to be at the portrait X, portrait Y. And basically this is the same for this one, but the frame that we're drawing is frame one and for the portrait. So we're drawing the portrait, but now what frame are we drawing? Right? So this is going to correspond to what person is talking. So we're going to need to set up a variable and I'll just call it portrait index and I'll set it to zero for now as the default. So that we get the first frame. And then we need again, port X and port Y. All right. And finally we draw the name box. All right, so now let's test this. So let's come into the farm room. I'm going to make a new layer that we're going to put all the text in. So let's just put it here on top of all our other objects because we want the text to appear on top of this, but probably below any transitions that we might have. So we'll put it in here and let's just drag in the object. So when we run it, it doesn't matter where we put it. It's always going to draw it on the GUI layer in the same spot. So hopefully because of all our scaling, it will put it right in the center for us. All right, so we've still got our inventory coming up on top of that. So actually we should turn that off. We should make show inventory false. So we'll do that. But we can also see that our text box is drawing properly. So let's come into inventory just first and turn that off. All right, and now we can start drawing the text. So let's set up text and just set up a string. And I might just copy this a few times 
So we can have a long string because we're going to need to program in some text wrapping. Now it's going to have name. And so this will be getting, again, the person who is talking. But for now, I'll just put name. And now let's draw these two things. So we go draw text. And let's actually, let's draw it a certain color. So again, for the text and the name, let's actually set up the color and the font that we're going to be using. So let's go text cull. And I might just make this black. And same for the name one. And now the font that we're going to be using, I'll just use 12 for now. And we'll see how that looks. So what we're actually going to want to do is before we draw any of this text, we want to set the font. So now we need an X and Y position for the name box and for the text. So now, like I said, this isn't going to be exactly where the name box and the text box are. It's going to be over and down a little bit. So we're going to need buffers. So I'm going to call this. Let's do it here. X buffer. And I'm just going to use 12. And this is just because I've tested these numbers and I think they look okay. You might want to play with them. So text X. So the text X position is going to be where the box is, but plus the X buffer. And the same for the Y. And now for the name text X. So I'm going to have it drawing from the center of the name box. And you might be thinking that this is going to look really weird because it's going to be aligned at the left and then drawing in the center. But what I'm going to do is when I'm drawing it, I'm going to change the alignment so that it's center justified. So I'm going to do the same thing for the Y. Just like that. All right, let's come back. So like I said, we're going to change that horizontal and vertical alignment. So we're going to use draw set H align. So for H align, that center is FA center. And for the vertical alignment, it's actually called the middle. And whenever you mess with the alignments, you're going to want to reset it afterwards. So let's just do that before we forget. So put it back to the default left and the top. All right, good. Now we can draw it. So we use the name text X, name text Y. And the string that we're drawing is the name. And now, so the color that we want is that name text color, but I don't want to write that out every time. So I'm just going to make a variable C equal to name text col, just like that, and full alpha. All right, and then we'll do the same thing for the text. But we want to get the text color. All right, so that should be it. Let's run that and give it a look. All right, great. So everything is drawing in the correct location. So we have that name and it's being drawn in the center just like we want. And the text is as well. But as you've probably noticed, if we have a long string, it's just going to keep drawing off to the side and it's not going to wrap here. So we're going to have to set this up ourselves. Now there is a alternate draw text function that does this for you. And we're going to use this for now. Later on, we're actually going to be making our own script that does this because we're going to be having text that spells out. But for now, let's just use that other function. So it's just draw text ext color. So this ext is just sort of like extended. So this is a similar function, but it's going to wrap the text for us. So for it to wrap that text, it asks for two more arguments. So it's asking for a width. So this is the max width that the text can kind of go to before it will wrap it to the next line. And then the separation is going to be how far apart the lines are. So I think we've actually used this in our inventory already, so that should look familiar to you. But let's also set up some variables that we can put in for this. So I'm going to come back to the create and I'm going to set a max width for the text. So text max width. And if you think about it, so the maximum width that the text can be is going to be so the text box and then minus two of the X buffers because we need that X buffer on the left and then the X buffer on the right. So we need to times that by two. So it's going to be the box width minus two times the X buffer. All right. And for the height of the text, what we are going to do is just get the string height of just some capital letter of the string. And what this does is it gets the string, the height of the string in pixels of whatever the font that is currently set. So what we should do is right here, just set that font that we're going to use font. And we just have to make sure that we're doing this after we actually save what the font is. So we'll put it down there. So I know this is a lot of variables and you might want to be careful with how you're ordering all of this because it is a lot to manage. All right, let's come back to the drawer and let's put in those arguments. 
So the separation is going to be that text height. And then text max width. All right, and let's run that. All right, good. So now it is wrapping correctly. Now the last thing we're going to do today is just get multiple pages working. So then instead of making the text variable just equal to one string, what we're going to do is have an array of text. So and we've used arrays before, so this shouldn't be too tricky. So let's just make that the first entry in the array. And I'll just make a second one equal to this is the second page. And what we're going to do is have a page variable and it's going to start off equal to zero. And we're going to use this to access the appropriate entry in our array. So at the start, when we get text page, that is going to be getting this one. And then when we press a button, we're going to change page to one. And then we'll be accessing this one. So we need to set that up. So the button I'm going to use, I'm just going to make this interact key. So I'm going to make this equal to the key itself. So you could put VK spacebar or something. I'm just going to use the E key. So before we set up the key presses, let's just come into here. So instead of accessing text now, we're going to be accessing text page. Now let's come into the step event and let's see if we press the interact key. Now, one of two things is going to happen. So either we have a page to actually go to. So if we're on a page and there is actually a next page to go to, we're going to want to increment this page variable. But if we're on the last page already, then we're just going to want to delete the text box. So we have to check what the length of this array is. So if page is less than the array length 1D of text, minus one, right? Because arrays start at zero. So if it is less than the total number of entries, then we do have a page to go to and we can just increment page. But otherwise, we're going to want to destroy the text box. All right, let's run that and have a look. So there we go, we're on the first page. We are accessing the first entry in the array. So if I press E now, or whatever your interact key is, it goes to the second page and one more time and it should delete. All right, there we go. So we've got it working. So in the coming tutorials, we'll add some interactability for the NPCs themselves. So they'll all have their own text. They'll have their own names, their own portraits and everything. We'll also set up that camera maneuverability and the text spelling out. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who is supporting me on Patreon to make these tutorials. And special shout outs to Adrian S, Amy Sarah, Antonio Capo, Colin McLernan, Cursed Toast, Daniel Hargrave, Doen Techman, Fasco, Ian Seckington, Max Molinaro, Ricky C, Semi Metal Alchemist, Semi Myth, Stray Moon, Stuart Wells, The Great Poultry, Thomas M, and XD Game Studio. I hope you guys are well, and I'll see you in the next video.